So it's time for me to show off the second prototype for my Raspberry Pi action camera and show you guys what I've changed, what I've improved about this, and what I do plan to improve in the future with this project. So starting off with the case here, I have fully rebuilt a new case for this. It mainly came down to the fact that I've changed the camera to the camera needing to be reverse mounted on the opposite side. So I've actually started with a base from Adafruit, which was their kind of wearable uh, Pi camera, and I remixed it to support kind of more what I need while still using their base and mainly still using their top panel here, which has very nice mounting points for the camera and then the Pi right above it to be very compact. Now, most of my changes focused on the base here, and I've actually made some improvements that are not on the case but are shown here. Um, first, starting with what I've done, you will see that there are four holes here on the side here. One, This first one here is for a button, this one's for the LED, and then these two are for the audio input jacks. Now, one thing I will get into a little bit later, but an improvement I do plan to make is I'm actually going to flip the position of these, so flip these to be here, and then these to be down here. You'll kind of see why I need to flip them, but uh, just know that that's one of the improvements I plan to make that's not actually reflected here. Other cutouts you'll notice that there's a cutout here for the SD card, a cutout here for the micro USB port, and then here's a small improvement I also made is I made a little indentation here for the other micro USB port because it does stick out a bit and it actually kind of currently prevents the board from perfectly fitting and perfectly sitting in the case. You'll also notice that at the end here I now have a mount for a GoPro style connection. So this mount here is meant to mount up to really any GoPro connector, any GoPro mounting system that I have. So this will allow me to actually have it be secured to something and not just be on a kind of random cardboard thing or just duct taped on. This is hopefully to provide it a little more stability and just be a little bit kind of better overall for me. Overall, I'm very quite happy with how this case turned out. It's actually been working pretty well. And I think with the small improvements I plan to make that this case will actually be pretty good and will be really what I'm looking for and help make this project even better. The next step was to then take all the parts, bring them all together, and assemble them into the case. First starting with soldering on in the wires onto the pieces, I first soldered wires onto the USB sound card that would then get soldered onto the Pi itself. This challenged my soldering abilities a bit, but once I got them all soldered together and I got soldered on the Raspberry Pi, which was a bit tricky, I actually added a little hot glue just to save the solder points and help relieve some stress on them and so they weren't bending as much and they wouldn't really break off as easily. I then continued that same process with the LED and button and installed them all into the case using a little hot glue to secure them in. As you can start to see here, this is why I'm going to plan to flip the sides that these inputs are on because these wires actually cross and the wires for the LED and button are actually sitting on top of the uh, USB sound card which kind of prevent the case and everything from really kind of going together and really kind of uh, attaching and fitting nicely. In the end, while not everything is a perfect fit and the lid doesn't fully go on because some of the wires are a little too short, we do have a case here that does contain everything, it does hold everything in place, not perfectly, but for the moment it does fit them all, so hopefully when I make these changes everything will fit nicely and it'll all be self-contained uh, much better than this and I won't need to have a little bit of as jank as this looks. So now moving on to one more kind of comparison between the GoPro and the Raspberry Pi camera here. Uh, right now there is currently a white piece of paper in front of the two cameras. As you can see here on the bottom, the Raspberry Pi has a bit of a red tint in a kind of a ring form, uh, ring formation around the uh, paper. And this is gonna be due to the lens. The lens kind of just has a bit of discoloration that the GoPro doesn't. So there is a little bit of kind of calibration or fixing to do with the GoPro, or with the, sorry, Raspberry Pi lens. But for the time being, it's at least workable and the video still does look pretty good. So then moving on to the actual video footage of outside my window, you will notice that the GoPro actually does still have a much wider field of view than the Raspberry Pi does, but kind of ignoring all of that, I am actually pretty happy with how the Raspberry Pi camera's video does look. Now, you kind of have to ignore a little bit of a red block in the middle that's actually the duct tape on the windowsill holding down the um, mounting bit as you can, you can also see in the, uh, the GoPro footage but you'll notice that the ring in the Raspberry Pi uh, camera video is noticeable but also not noticeable. Um, when I point it out you will definitely notice that there is definitely discoloration in the ring but overall the color is still better. It's not the same, it's definitely redder than the GoPro's footage is but again 
it's actually pretty good to me and I'm pretty happy with it so hopefully I can get back out to the rink and actually kind of test these two together in a uh, more action-y setting and see how they compare. So anyways, that will do it for this video. These are the updates I have made, as well as some of the updates I plan to make in the future. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next time. Peace out.